Hello everyone, in this short video I'm going to solve some little tricks used by malware, parkers, protectors uh, to try to make reverse engineering a bit harder. The tricks are rather simple, I think. Um, on one hand, one of them is a fake export directory and the other one is an anti-emulation and also an annoyance trick that uh, well, the malware sample that we are going to dissect is using. As I did with the previous video, I will leave a link to the malware sample so you can download it and play with it as much as you want. The malware sample, if I remember correctly, was called by some AV companies as Renos, which means it is anything. And well, that's it. Let's open Ida and start uh, analyzing it. So let me open it all by default. And the first super surprise. The import segment seems to be destroyed. This is what Ida says, and it means that it cannot find the IAT, the import address table. This is commonly done to try to hide the Windows APIs that it is calling. We will take care of this later on. Okay, and here we are. As we can see, as soon as we open the binary, things aren't looking pretty. So we have some instructions, then some bytes here, then we have something that it says is port entry in 1250 uh, with some weird name. And then if we take a look at the functions, we can see that, well, they don't make any sense in most cases. Like, for example, in this case, we only have an as instruction and then it doesn't make sense. So the trick that this model sample is using is if we go to view, open to view, exports, we will see that we have actually 1,800, more than 1,800 exported functions. Well, all of these functions are fake functions. They are wrong. They are only meant to um, obfuscate a bit or to try to cause problems to either uh, to display proper disassembly. Okay, first trick that we are going to undo. First of all, we need to reopen it because we need to specify how we want to load this malware sample. I'm closing without saving it. And now I'm reopening it again. Okay, and now in this initial dialog, what I'm going to check is manual loads. Click it and then OK. So the new image base, as before, do you want to load the sections? Yes, all of the sections. Do we want to load the file header? Not in this time. And now, do you want to process the export directory? No, we don't want, because this is actually the trick that the malware sample is using. So, nope. Again, it says that the IIT, the import address table is hidden, whatever. And here we are. Now that we told Ida not to parse the export directory, we can see that we have better looking phantoms. They um, they end actually in a red instruction which makes more sense. And well, let's see now more stuff. I'm going to decompile these phantoms and look, we have some APIs being called here, create menu and so well and more. And if we go to the entry point in a start, we have a couple of uh, calls to create menu. This is both anti-emulation and an annoyance to make uh, the analysis of this malware sample a bit harder because the code is intertwined between the calls to create menu. And also it is an anti-emulation trick because let's say that we are trying to emulate this sample to unpack it with our uh, emulator if we don't have support for this Windows API create menu, we aren't going to uh, continue properly. So, well, first of all, I want to analyze what is it doing. So what we are going to do is we are going to remove all the calls to create menu. We have two options to do that. We can either, let me do, First one thing, we can either go to its call create menu, its instruction that we want, 
and replace it with something. These are the bytes, and we can replace them with, I don't know, whatever. For example, nothing the instruction. Yep. 90 is actually the no operation instruction that you most likely know, but just in case. Okay. And this is something that we call do. We knob the instruction, we knob all the calls to create menu, so they don't appear. Uh, we can do it manually, but I don't recommend you, because if we press X here, you can see that we have uh, almost 1,000 calls to create menu. That we know for a fact that uh, they are only meant to make the analysis a bit more tedious. So instead of going to its call to create menu, what we are going to do is we are going to, to run an IDA Python script and that's it. So, okay. File, script commands, and then Python. Yep. Yep. So what we need to do is first, we need to search for some specific text and the text is this one, call one, two, three, four. So call one, two, three, four, create minimum. Uh, how can we search for this text? We can use the find text API. I never remember how <laughs> this one properly works, so I'm going to cheat. And here we are. I'm going to copy this one. And explain. So this is the text that we want to search. Then we have... But I'm not sure is if you are properly seeing it. Mm -mm. So let me go here first because you probably don't you probably don't see it properly in either. So this is the first version of the script. This is the text that we are going to search in the database. And we start by the minimum address in the database. We will loop until the maximum address in the database. And what we do is, while the current address is not the ends of the database and also is not a bus address, it means that we didn't manage to find anything. We are going to call idc.findText and we call uh, it from which address is the first part, then which direction if we search down or up, then this ones we don't care and what we are going to search. It will return an address. We can take a look if the address is valid or if it didn't find anything. And in case it finds it, we can take the size of the instruction, the size in bytes of the instructions, which is going to be the call create menu. So it is going to be five bytes, but, but anyway. And then we are going to call patch bytes with, well, simply put in a knob, no operating instruction for each single byte on uh, this instruction. So let me copy it. Let me get back to Ida, paste it, and well, let's run it. First of all, I'm going to save it just in case. And let's run. Here we are. And now we don't have any code. We have a lot of knobs, but we don't have any code. Let's see again the, the compilers. So this is the pseudo code that we had before. If I refresh by pressing F5, it will take some time and hey, now it looks a bit better, much better than before actually. Now we don't have any call to create menu. However, what we have done is not very correct. Why? Because um, the API, let me undo it. Okay, and let me search again for some create menu. Okay, not this one, it's not the best one in this case. Uh, maybe this, no. Mm, no. Well, create menu, this Windows API is going to return something in the register EAX. However, we are not touching anything in the, uh, with, we are not doing anything with the EAX register. So we are going to patch it, but instead, of 
nopping it, putting only no operating instructions. What we are going to do is do something with the EAS register. We are going to change it and make it, uh, instead of called create menu, we are going to assemble an instruction that is going to be move EAX1. That's it. Let me... And we are back here. So this time, as I said, what we are going to do is patch with um, the proper instruction that we want that cannot be something like a no operation as we did before because create menu that Windows API is going to return something that is not zero. So we are going to assemble the instruction move EAX1 and patch the current instruction, oh sorry, the instruction that we search, the call create menu, with that uh, code, the move EAX1. So this is the script. Let me show you this a bit better here. So what we do is as before, we search instruction and then what we do is we assemble and we tell uh, which is the address. This is something that you don't really care about. True is if we are going to do a 16 bits assembly instruction or a 32 bits. Yes, this is a 32 bits, and then the instruction that we want to assemble, which is move EAX1. Okay, let's go to IDA. Here we have all the create menus or some of the create menus constructions. Let me run it. Run. And now what we do is move EAX1, which is uh, more correct than what we had before, which was simply a no operation. Let's get back here and press F5 to refresh. Okay, so here we have, it is looking a bit more better than before. And uh, well, there are some rare things that we can see here that either soul have uh, removed already, but well, we don't really mind. It is looking much, much better than before. And now we call to start analyzing this malware sample aesthetically. But this is something that we leave for another video. I hope it helps you tomorrow if you have any of the problems that I solved here, how to solve. So hopefully it is useful for you. Bye-bye.